Hey guys, welcome to uh, part three of our Raspberry Pi motion detection series. Today we will we will configure our motion config file, uh, start our software to record the first video. So just follow along, and we will record our first video today. Just follow the instructions. So now we log into our Raspberry Pi, and um, we are navigating to where the configuration file is located. <clears throat> uh, and the configuration file is located in the user local etc uh, motion folder. So we're just navigating there using our terminal. Uh, and by now you should be comfortable with using terminal uh, if you have followed our previous series. Uh, if not, just please go check it out. So here what we're doing is there's already a motion-dist conf file. And uh, that's like installed when we uh, compiled our motion and what hap motion software and what happened is uh, that's what comes with the base package and now we are going to copy it and edit the file and rename it as motion.conf because that's what's going to be picked up. So here the first line says uh, daemon off and we are going to say daemon on. So don't worry about this. Uh, daemon just means like a software which runs in the background and releases terminal. And uh, the PID file. So this is where our motion is going to uh, store its process ID and this is very important because we will be using this file to uh, stop motion or in Linux terms we say kill motion. I think Linux is a little uh, kind of uh, bad with this terminology with like the daemon and the kill. I don't like that but let's just continue. So I'm typing the comments here so that you can just follow along. Uh, so the PID is like I said is needed to uh, stop our motion and I'm putting that file in home uh, slash pi slash logs slash motion dot PID. Oh, ignore uh, my windows here. I'm running an old PC and it runs out of memory when I'm trying to record my screen. So that's what's happening here. Uh, but not to worry about that. I can still finish this video. So the next line item is the log file. So in case there are any errors uh, while recording video, uh, we'll need a log file where we uh, store our error messages. So we're going to change that value and we're going to put it in home pi and we'll put it in the log folder again and we'll just uh, name it uh, with a dot log like motion dot log. So just follow along. Also, just a note guys, if you have not liked my videos or subscribed to my channel yet uh, on YouTube, just subscribe because I'm going to do a few giveaways on my channel. And it will mainly be like Raspberry Pi or like memory cards and I'll, I, I guess you'll like that. So the next thing we're going to fill out is the target directory. This is exactly where our motion is going to, uh, like you could have guessed, target directory. It's where our uh, video files are going to be. So I'm just going to like put it in uh, the videos folder under home pi videos. And uh, that's where our uh, video files will be when they are recorded. And we can change this later anytime. Uh, oh, I created a subfolder called motion just 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 to keep my other videos in case I have other videos on Raspberry Pi I want to just keep them separate. So I'm and the the when when the motion software runs it will directly uh, like uh, automatically create this uh, folder. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, so I'm doing a voiceover here. So I'm not recording my voice live. I have already recorded the video and I'm doing a voiceover. So that's why I have the liberty of like speaking to you while I watch my own video. So then, uh, so apologize for any uh, delays while I explain things. So the MMAL cam name, uh, we just use uh, whatever the default setting was there, which is it suggested us to use the vc.ril.camera. That's for the Pi camera. And then we're going to set some settings uh, for exposure, video stabilization, automatic white balance. And uh, those are that's the next line. So I explained that, what, what I just set there. And 
it says there in the help file, like if you want more parameters, you can go to the, the raspy vid or raspy still tool documentation and just Google that and you'll find the documentation and you'll get where I'm getting these parameters from and they just help our video quality a little bit. So just, just to like stabilize our video. <clears throat> and uh, after this, we are going to set the width and the height of our video and the frame rate. So remember, we are using the Raspberry Pi camera mainly because uh, it helps us record a very smooth video. Frankly, you can record, go up to like 90 frames with Raspberry Pi, which would be like a slow motion, really smooth, slow motion video. But we're not going to do that. So uh, typically human eye sees 24 frames per second. And uh, we're going to set our frame rate a little above 24 frames per second. We're going to set it to 30 frames per second. And that should be sufficient uh, for like a smooth video. So if you were using uh, a USB camera, it would have been a completely different configuration. And what would have happened is you would not have got a smooth frame rate. So I have done this experiment before and I just wanted to kind of not even show you the USB camera setup, which is your like normal webcam because it gives you like a really poor quality video. So what we are making here is actually going to give you like a really good quality video and you can actually increase the image width pixels and I'm just not doing that. You can go 1280 multiplied by 920 or you can even go higher. I'm just not doing that because uh, I also want to be conservative in terms of storing files on the Raspberry Pi because we're storing on memory. And maybe later you can do an improvement where you can connect a network disk to your Raspberry Pi and store the files directly on that network disk. And that would be really cool. I have done that before and it works really well. But right now I just moved and my network drive is not set up. So <clears throat> it's uh, really difficult for me to do that. Anyway, but I can show it, show it to you later. So here we set a few more parameters. One is the threshold, the noise, and uh, how much time do you want to wait after the detection. So we are saying that uh, we will wait for 60 frames. So that is two seconds after the motion is no longer detected. And just follow along and just copy these parameters. I mean, they have a technical explanation you can read from the motion documentation. And the script execution configuration, we'll use it soon. Uh, once we are done with today's uh, chapter or today's part, we are going to next use the script execution to execute and email us our video as well as text us and alert us. And this will all run on the Pi, Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to show it to you, but that will be the part four of our uh, Raspberry Pi motion, motion detection series. So what else? What else? Let's check. Hmm. The movie quality, we can bump that up a little bit. Uh, that actually controls the bit rate. Uh, but if you go too high, like I tried like 100% and my three minute video was 200 megs, which is actually uh, really difficult to email because Google has certain limits or your email has certain limits on how big the memory files can be. Uh, I just changed the movie codec to MP4. That is kind of important because uh, your iPhone, your Android, everything is able to decode or play an mp4 video so it's better to just use an mp4 codec to record your video and we are going to not stream on localhost localhost means you will be you would want to check your stream by logging into uh, the raspberry pi uh, I, I don't think we are going to do that we are just going to like stick to uh, recording our videos uh, to the Raspberry Pi and then emailing them out to us. Uh, today what I'm going to do is not email the videos out but just copy paste them onto my uh, Windows Drive using another software called WinSCP. So it's used for file transfer over the SSH protocol. What And it gives you like a nice window interface. It's a very old software 
a lot of people use it and it's a free software again uh, i'm all about like open source free software so use win scp uh, let's rec let's let's just run motion first record a video and then we'll use win scp to like copy the file back uh, onto our windows and then play the file because like playing the file on raspberry pi you can do that but again like right now you're connected over a network to raspberry pi so you will feel like there is some lag and that's the lag that you will feel if you run the file on raspberry pi because of the network not so much because raspberry pi or the file is not smooth and i just want to make that distinction so what we're going to do now is uh, run our motion and once we run our motion uh, it's going to record its first real video because it records first video when it starts and then you can test it out by like moving in front of it so to run motion we have to go one directory up that is uh, usr local and then inside local there is a bin folder so bin is where your uh, executables are stored and you just type motion and it just starts now how do we know it starts because we have a lot of uh, uh so oh, i forgot sudo there and then i said i forgot sudo so anyway so if say sudo motion because uh, uh, we have installed motion as a super user we have installed it as a root so now motion should have started recording its first video because whenever motion starts the software starts it records its first video so there you see that's the first video file and uh, you will also see that there will be the logs created of the video file right there and now what we are going to do is we are going to go back to our windows uh, so we are in windows we are running uh, this over vnc so what we are going to do is go back to windows and then log in to our raspberry pi using win scp so we can do a file transfer between windows and Oh, I just lost a connection for a bit there uh, and it's back. Uh, it's, it's just because of my network issues, but don't worry about that. So let's, let's go and open WinSCP and you'll see some blurring here because I just want to hide my Windows directory structure and not give out any personal information because it's my personal computer. So I, I used uh, Google or uh, YouTube to to blur certain portions of my video but anyway so just give your IP address like you give in the VNC server and if you have not watched uh, our first video please go back and like watch it like it subscribe it so put in your host name or the IP address uh, for your Raspberry Pi and for us it is 192.168.1.101 it can be anything 1 dot like 4, 3, 92, anything below 256 for you so you'll find that from the VNC server just watch my first video and just log in here uh, it will connect very smooth uh, and just browse browse so you're already in the Pi directory there on the right you have the home slash pi you can see up there and on the left you have my windows pc uh, folder directories and i just want to blur that out so what we are going to do is uh, so i i believe what i did here was actually like i stood up and like went in front of the raspberry pi at some point and like just wave my hands around so so that another video was recorded uh, and I think I believe I'm going to check it. Uh, again, I'm doing a voiceover. So yeah, I've already done this and I'm do recording the voice later. So yeah, there's uh, another one because I just like got up and like went in front of the camera and like moved around. So it recorded another video. And I think that video is more interesting because the first video is just like a default video and it just records the room. It just starts the first video. So first video is not that interesting. The second video is like when it is detecting motion. <coughs> So we are going to, I think, transfer the second file and it, that would make a lot more sense. So now I'm trying to figure out where do I put this file? Like I was saying, I have a memory problem because I've been using this laptop, which is actually a dual booted MacBook Air. And I plan to do a video series on that, like how to dual boot your MacBook Air when I buy a new one. But I bought this in 2011 
and uh, I have it dual booted on Windows uh, with Windows 7 and my Windows 7 disk is just running out of memory. So next time I won't make that mistake, I'll probably like get a higher hard disk uh, or like a bigger hard disk on, on my MacBook so I can like dual boot. And I'll probably make a video of that one on like how to smoothly dual boot your Windows. So yeah, we put it on the Windows and now you can see I'm like trying to play it on my Windows. Uh, you, you already see there's like a thumbnail image of it. And let's play the video. Oh, look at that. You can see me right there. Yeah, I just came back from work and uh, uh, I'm making this video. So it took me like about an hour after work. So I played it again there. I hold a full-time job. So, so I just do this on my free time to improve uh, my own understanding and learning of like different topics, uh, like what you have read on the website. Anyway, so now we are almost done. We know how to record a video. We have recorded our first video. And uh, I believe uh, that's about it. I mean, uh, congratulations. Now we'll move on to like scripting in the next session. And please subscribe to my channel, guys, if you like these videos and learn something new from it. Uh, because that would really help me uh, make this channel better. Uh, like my video, subscribe. We just stop motion by showing a kill command, like I was saying in the beginning of the video. So uh, I've, I've posted these commands on the web page and just follow, follow those. Okay, thanks guys. Uh, let's see you next, next session. Bye.